Okay, guys, good morning. Well, <clears throat> I got the bad news from the mechanic that the the truck has a stuck valve. He said he checked the sprock plugs and the wires and everything else. And he quoted me a price which is high. It's a high price. It's almost $4,000. And that's a wrong time for it. Hiya, Papa. Hiya, Papa. Okay. Okay. Because Christmas coming up, taxes are coming up on all the properties. It's going to be expensive. So I decided I'm going to try something I watched some people do. I'm going to put sea foam in the tank and in the oil and, and run it. See if it, if it comes loose. So I went and got some gas. I only got eight. Uh, gallons in the tank, so I want to get some gas. Okay, so there it goes. You can hear bubbling. And this tank is 14 gallons, so I'm gonna put half. So I have like 16, and then I can put 16 ounces. Then also I'm gonna put some in the do that right now. Okay, the trunk and, and I also did something on this uh, avalanche. I put some on the fuel because it turns out that these engines they have a reputation for having uh, valves getting stuck. They know that. I want to prevent uh, happening to the avalanche. So. And when I do it, just gonna have this thing run here and park. <clears throat> and hopefully, this is gonna go in the oil. Six ounces. The truck, uh, I already did the hunting. And uh, yes, I'm gonna miss the uh, last uh, day, but I'm not gonna blow $4,000 just for that. I gotta do my own uh, treatment. If it, and uh, I'm hoping that the sea foam treatment would take care of the unsticking that valve. Um, I didn't know the type of valve either. I thought it was a regular engine valve, but these are cylinders with a spring on top, and it's kind of weird. I never seen that because I really didn't look into knowing the engine. It's it's a 6.0, and very powerful and everything, but. Everything's got its limitations. I don't think this goes from four to eight like the avalanche. So that's why I put the sea foam on the fuel and on the oil, the avalanche and drive it on on third. And instead of putting it on D, put it on three. And that'll make the engine run on eight only, eight cylinders. And that way it's soaking that, that those valves, prevent anything happening. Preventive maintenance. That's what it's called. All right, let me see what's going on here. Okay, so now I'm gonna put some of the uh, mechanic in a can. I'm hoping for the best. All right, let's get this thing started. Let's see how it runs. Oh, shitty. I'm getting the I'm getting the stability track. There it is. I'm getting the stability track and the engine flashing. So it turned out that it wasn't a fuel pump. It wasn't the fuel pump. I tested it 
And he said the fuel pump has pressure. He said the sound comes from the left side of the engine. So I'm gonna let it run on its own for about, I don't know, 20 minutes, half an hour. I don't see any smoke coming out of the back yet. It runs really rough. So we'll see. That's the only thing I could do. I could test with my timing gun. I can test the the coils to do that. All right, later. So that's it. I'm gonna let it warm up, and then I'm gonna step on it a little bit. I don't wanna abuse it too much. I don't wanna damage anything, but I wanna see if the liquid is gonna do anything. I've seen some videos and a lot of people swear by it and say, oh, it's great, it's great, you know. It, it, it's gonna take a while, but uh, I'm gonna try it. So in the meantime, the truck's gonna sit there for a few months. Uh, I'm not in a hurry to fix it right now. Like I said, I got taxes coming up. I just got one of the notices on one of the properties. So, you know, I got all this money going out and I can hold off on that for a while. And also I gotta, I wanna start working on my mom's car. I need to sell it to Honda Civic. 96 so people have seen it already uh it runs great the only bad thing about it it's a 96 it's old so i bought the lamp cleaner for the light bulbs in the front for the headlights i'm gonna see if i can work on that and polish it up a little bit sand it whatever the kit comes with i think i have another kit that half used all right so we'll see you later bro this is gonna be a long day bye okay so i have it revving high 2000 rpms and it still sounds it still sounds like it's not doing it so I imagine I'll be doing this for a few uh, days or a few weeks. But I put the uh, hose to my ear and I checked the, first I checked all the uh, coils. The coils are good, they're firing. And I said, I'm gonna check the uh, spark plug, but then I said, let me check the, the noise first. And I got a hose and I put it in my ear and I started going behind the coil one by one. It turns out the number two on the left is the one making the racket. So it is the, uh, it is the, uh, the valve. So I'm gonna let it soak in the liquid now. And later on today, I'll start it up again. See what happens. Uh, it's gonna be costly. And if my friend was alive, the mechanic, between the two of us, we could have fixed this. We don't need to remove the heads. And the mechanic was telling me also to replace the fuel pump, I mean the uh, oil pump, because it's in the front of the engine. I thought it was in the tank, but it's not. The, the oil tank, the oil bowl is small. I went under there to see, uh, so I can change the oil later in a few weeks when I'm finished with this uh, cleansing. So I already bought new oil and stuff and a filter. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it soak and see what, what it does later. But I don't think it's gonna really do it because it's really stuck in there. It's really stuck. Okay, so now I'm gonna get going with the, with the Honda. Let's see if I can 
clean these plastic uh, headlights and it's a boring ch chore so i'm not gonna video that all right later well i did the lights in the car and the truck and they came out pretty good they were pretty yellow and i just put that sealer on it that's supposed to dry now in 24 hours not bad for the way they were but one thing i noticed is that when you clean your lenses you're going to be surprised when you use a uh, liquid cold crud i sprayed this lights and it, and it started coming out yellow i mean i'm going to show you the paper let me see where is it look at that this is from the lenses while it got clean i sprayed it like three times and you can see this this thing would come dripping down i'm going whoa and it, it's all the crap from the road and stuff it looked like nicotine and i cleaned it and it came up pretty clean and then i did the treatment and this is what i use by the way this little kit that comes with the pads i'll show you because i think for the money it cost me 12 bucks um it comes with the with the uh lens uh, sealer it comes with the uh, lens uh, compound compound then the spray to lubricate and you do the one the two the three and the four and they're really fine sand uh, sanding pads and it took out a lot of the grime so i took advantage and i did both and now i'm going to say and smoke myself a bolivar I lit this about 15 minutes ago and look how big it is. Come on, Papa, let's sit down and talk. What do you think, Papa? What do you think? He is a baby of habits. We fed him. He came out here, laid down a little bit, then went to the yard and she was working back there pulling weeds and stuff. And then he started acting like a baby. Mm -hmm. I said, what's the matter? And he walked to the garage. He wanted to go night night in the sofa. So I took him in there and immediately went to bed, you know, little siesta after after lunch. And now he's sitting here with dad. He sees he sees me pulling out a cigar out of the cigar box and he starts rrr, rrr, rrr. He, he wants to come out so well the truck the the uh, the Silverado it looks like it needs a valve job so it's gonna sit there for a while so I let it uh, I, I, I poured the liquid you know the sea foam and ran it for 30 minutes I think and then let it soak in and then tomorrow I'll start it and every day I'll be doing this every day and maybe I'll drive it up and down uh, I don't want to take it out to the highway because it is is running very rough and I don't want to damage any more that I already have I know that that cam is going to have to be replaced but this is going to be going up and up and up in price so I took a break from the sun because it was pretty hot and went in and, and had some coffee and sat down and watch a little bit of uh, YouTube people hunting. And let me tell you this. <laughs> I saw today something that I have never ever seen anywhere, either in person or on video. This uh, young Mexican hunters, they must, they must be no older than 24. They went to the... Uh, this area, I think it was D8. I just don't know where. Uh, I don't recognize that area, and I've been all over D8. So maybe it wasn't D8, maybe it was something else. I thought it was D8. Anyways, they went down and down and down. And they went to the bottom of this huge mountain. And at the bottom, they found seven bucks hanging out together. 
I mean, seven bucks right there. It wasn't one over there, one up, or one down. No, they were within 20 yards to each other, just grazing and, you know, moving around. And then these guys, they, they were kind of picking the one they wanted. I don't know if it was the best one or, but they followed one. And I think the, the one they wanted to shoot, it went off with, it was two of them. They, they were bedded down for the morning at 10 o'clock. And they were waiting for the deer to get up. Deer apparently heard something and kind of moved, started moving and they shot it. And then the other one was behind it, I didn't see it because they, they had the camera on it. And it was a four and three plus two little, uh, they had two, uh, uh, two kickers and two at the base, uh, two extra points coming out of one side. Okay, legally, if you can put a ring on it, that's, the, that's considered a, an antler. So that was six and three, in my view. But they were saying it was four and three. Good, good trophy quality. Good body, good massive, big, big deer. And and they they got it in all that. Now these guys. I mean, you've seen all these other people that they have backpacks and they pack it out in pieces. These guys don't do that. They have backpacks, but what they do, one of them is selected to they tie the legs around the, the front and and then they carry it like a backpack the whole deer and the head is over you know the hunter's head dangling around and they carry the whole body of the deer and then they were taking turns and then almost halfway up uh, here he, he said okay here comes my little brother to to help out and then they took turns and I'm going you see I don't have that first of all I don't have the strength to carry a hundred and gut it out that thing that thing must have been a hundred and forty to be very conservative it could have been a hundred and sixty but let's say a hundred and forty let's say it's a hundred and twenty 120 pound deer on your back. Of course, the other guys gotta carry the pack and the rifle, binoculars, everything else. And that's why I said I can't compete with these guys. They're young, they're in a group, minimum th three to four, and they can handle it. So I give them kudos, you know, I, I give them congratulations. That was a good hunt. Uh, that's the way it should be done. I don't have anybody that wants to hunt uh, around my age because they can't anymore. So I need young guys to go with me to do that kind of hunt because the only way they found these seven, and they weren't little spikies. I'm talking seven mature. I saw a nice three, uh, three by two, a four by four, good size four by four thick a three by three that four by th by three and there might have been another uh, you know four by four there the seven bucks they could they, they chose and picked the one they wanted to kill and oddly enough they only shot one i mean there were three guys with rifles so they shot one i don't know if the other one got away couldn't shoot it. you know I, I didn't they didn't video that but when you have a group of people that they're committed and they say, let's go down in the in the gully and they say, let's go, this, these kids are goats. These kids will climb a hill, a mountain, up and down, and go to the next one up and down. They're in their 20s. I did that for a while. I didn't do it that extensive, but I did that for a while, especially pig hunting. And... Uh, you know, I can't compete with that. I mean, I, if, if if they tell me there's deer down at the bottom and I say, well, I'm gonna have to wait for them to come up because 
who's gonna carry me up <laughs> if I go down in that hole who's gonna bring me up that's the problem it's not only the age I got the shoulder issue that I'm gonna see if I can get surgery now I already got my CAT scan and it's my hip problem you know that I, I can't abuse it I can't carry and I'm not in the shape when I was in my 20s so I got I got three things going against me actually four so shoulder hip leg age <laughs> these guys I'm pretty I'm pretty I'm happy for them that they did the hunt they didn't shoot it from the road they didn't poach it they went down picked the one they wanted because I, like I said, I have never seen seven bucks together. Not in Wyoming, not in Colorado, in Utah, and you know, anywhere. Uh, that was surprising to see that in California. Uh, so they did good. They did good. If they're, if they're watching this video, thumbs up, buddy. Thumbs up. Now, I saw another video that I'm not too happy about. They shot a Forky, a little four by, uh, two by two. That was a waste. And they shot a two and one. And the hunter said, there were five in the group. The hunter said, in the, in the video said, no, uh, we're not gonna video that because some people don't like it. And they're probably talking about me. <laughs> because some of these guys have seen my videos that I don't agree on killing a small up and coming deer. You gotta let that deer grow, bro. But every time these people shoot a deer, they keep saying, we got the carnitas, you know, we got the meat. That's all they're after. You know, I understand they wanna throw a barbecue for the family and the friends, I understand that. But you know, consider yourself a, a real hunter and kill an adult buck. That's gonna give you more prestige within the hunting community. Don't be killing little things that, you know, the deer doesn't even know what's going on. He's not smart enough, he's not wise enough. Uh, he's not sharp enough. And, and that video was done in the A zone and another thing, uh, <laughs> there was another guy saying that they talked to a fishing game. Fishing game said, oh, somebody caught one out of 300 hunters. 300 hunters in an area that is about one quarter the size of the eight because it's close to L.A. And that's why they can go there for the weekend, go to work on Monday, da-da-da, you know. It's, it's, uh, and, and they, they saturate the hills. They just comb them from one end to the other because they go in large groups. Now, one thing I'm going to say about these guys, most of them, I'm, they have top of the line equipment. I look, I look at their rifles. I look at their scopes. They carry radios with long antennas they have good binoculars a guy was uh, looking through a Shorosky 12 by 40 something I think it was and then another guy had a Shorosky uh, spotting scope we're not talking cheap here this is top of the line uh, optics they got very good equipment. They have spent the money because they like the sport. If, if you're going to be a poacher, you think you're going to buy a $1,500, $2,000 rifle? No. You're going to buy a regular cheap thing that can shoot. But these guys got very good, very good rifles. Some of them have carbon fiber barrels. Uh, flash suppressors no, it's not a flash suppressor it's a muscle uh, it reduces the, the 
the recoil. So it's a recoil suppressor, but those are loud because it's got a lot of holes. So I give them kudos. I give them good points. Um, but when they start saying we got the we got the meat, oh man! And the guy was complaining. Hey, hey, hey! Don't be eating the fertilizer. Just get out! Get out! Get out, get out, get out. Don't eat the fer fertilizer. You're gonna get sick. Hey, babe. No. Shh. Get out. That's all we need is another vet field. No. So. <laughs> Eating the fertilizer. Boy, this uh, Bolivar never fails, never disappoints. Very good. No biting, no, no bitterness. Smooth cigar. So these guys, the, the the ones that went to the A zone, that they went to some places that they even have to go with electric bikes. That's one other thing. And and I don't. And I don't mind the competition because the more hunters, the more movement, more people moving around, chances of bumping a deer, make them run, make them move. So I'm not, I'm not angry at the competition. I welcome it. When there's a lot of hunters in the area, there might be a better chance of seeing a deer at least running away from you. But I'm tired of going, not even seeing a doe or a fawn, anything. That's ridiculous. The area is overhunted by mountain lions. And, and, and the fishing game keeps allowing hunters to kill little two and one horn. Spiky. Come on. That's, it's decimating the herd. It's a group of young guys further north by I think Sacramento that they're complaining about the same thing and their name their channel name is Cassia Outdoors I believe and he was complaining about how come there's no deer and you don't see any deer and I said look dude they don't care Fish and Gate doesn't care all they want is your tag money if you don't hunt nothing psh, they don't give a shit it's about the money and then they allow the mountain lion uh, you know protected and in the in the line is killing everything cannot have it both ways you cannot get you know have people go hunt and not have any results and those guys hunt those guys they're young guys one guy in particular he's pretty tall and strong he puts a huge backpack and he gets in there he's going up and down going on the on on the slope of the hills, they're glassing and they're glassing and, and they're complaining that they don't get anything. You know, I, I got my issues that I can't, too much, can't do too much walking. And like I said, if I don't catch it, I understand, but at least I wanna see something, man. I don't care how far it is. And that's the problem with that area. It's so dense with forest that you can't see it. They might be there, you're not gonna see them. So what's the point I'm going? What's the point of spending money and sacrificing and wasting your energy and then coming home all beat up and sore, putting all that effort and there's no results? New area, that's it. it. It has to be, I have to find a new area. And when I started hunting, I started hunting in the A zones. And there you can see the game thousand yards away you can sit there why because it's open open hills oak trees yellow grass and you can see you can even see the animals sitting under a tree uh, getting shade and that's fine then you can say okay I'm gonna walk on the side of the hill I'm gonna work my way over here I'm gonna approach the deer da -da -da, you have a game plan but in the forest 
there's 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 so many trees they had this big fire on the other side of the current trees are all burnt to a crisp and why because they're so close to each other the the fire just jumped like a domino effect it just jumped from this one to that one to that one to that one it just and it it ate miles of forest because these people in garment don't want to cut trees he said it the big idiot in sacramento he said it we're not going to cut any more trees we haven't cut trees in years now they started doing some logging in some areas i seen some some trucks but man they need to jump on it and manage those forests because too many trees when you get a fire it just burns through like it has gasoline you know too many freaking trees in that forest and then you can see the deer so like i said what's the point i'm going not anymore even my friend said i don't know where else to go and he's been going there not as long as me but he's been going there for a long time and i asked him where are you going to go he goes i don't know because there's no advantage point to sit in glass and say okay look uh, let's Let's jump over, let's go over there, then let's cut through here. No, you are not gonna see any deer. If you go into that forest, you're not gonna see them. They're gonna hear you coming or gonna smell you. Easy. So that's it. Okay, Papa, let's go back inside. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.